Hi there. Today I want to show you something really, really cool. As of Redis version 3.2, which we got the release candidate for just last week, you can actually debug Redis Lewis scripts with Redis CLI. But there's another announcement that we want to make, and that's the ability to actually develop and debug Redis Lua scripts with Zero Brain Studio, which is a lightweight Lua IDE. It's totally free, it's open source, it's lightweight, it does everything you could ever wish for, and I really recommend that you check it out. So you just need to download it in order to do that. And once you click the download button, you get to the download page, pay whatever you want, and download and install it for your operating system. Once you've done that, you'll need the plugin, a Redis plugin for Zero Brain Studio, which you can obtain easily from this repository here. I'll put the link down below in the description of the video. Grab this file or the entire thing, but the most important is that you get redis.lua and drop it into one of the packages directory that Zero Brain Studio supports, either the hidden one in your home directory to install it just for your user or in the actual installation directory to, in, uh, to have it enabled for all your users. Once you have that in place, start up Redis and ZeroBrain. Now to, to work with ZeroBrain in Redis, the first thing you want to make sure is that your project's interpreter is indeed set to Redis. You can verify that here it displays the interpreter or and you can even click here and just use this pop-up menu to select your interpreter. So the first thing we'll do is show you how easy it is to run Lua in Redis. Here's a script. Return 42, a very trivial script. I'll save it as 42. And if I'll run this script now, it will get evaled against Redis, just like any other script. Uh, once I click the execute project file, uh, button or F6, I get presented with the choice of Redis URI. So you need to put in your, your Redis's URI here. This is the default. You can also put the password, but the password isn't stored for the next session. You'll have to enter it again. Um, let me do OK. And the script was sent to Redis, evaluated, and I got back the expected 42. So that's pretty cool, but it doesn't really show you everything you can do because this script is so simple that I don't think it has any interesting bugs. So I'll close this script and open a new file. And this time, let's pick a more uh, a beefier, a fleshier example. For example, uh, a Lua implementation of Redis's Inkerby. So I'm sure everyone knows about Inkerby. You give it a key name and, uh, and an increment and it inc adds the increment atomically, of course, to the value in that key. Let's try doing that or something similar to that purely in Lua. So thinking about, let's save this file first. We'll call it Inkerby. So Inkerby expects two parameters one is a key name, the other is an increment. Let's read these in. Uh, the first thing we'll do, we'll read a key. So local k is a local variable that will have the key. And if I'll start typing keys, you can see that I have auto completion here, neato. And if I ever forget what keys does, I can just pop up this tooltip, which will remind me about it. That's really cool. So keys one, I want the first key to be stored in k and local v or rather I, the increment is coming from R. Yay, auto-completion, and of course, uh, tooltipping. So I have these two inputs here, and the, the next thing I want to do is, of course, read the current value from K, the key that I'm using. So I'm going to do that by declaring yet another local variable. This time I'll call it V for value. And I'm going to use Redis dot. You can see the auto completion works for libraries as well. And I'll just use call, of course, here and ask for a get of K. Now V should have my current value for V, for K actually. And I can just type in this expression that adds I to V and sets V to I. So V right now has been incremented atomically, of course. This is a Lua script. The next thing I want to do is Redis call and actually persist the change. So set KV. And since we're doing Redis, let's adhere to Redis semantics and return 
the new value to the user. So that's my inker by script in the uh, I'll save it. Now before I go off running it, I need to supply these two uh, parameters for the script. To do that, I'll go to the project menu and open the command line parameters dialog. Here I get to enter my parameters or other key names and arguments just like I would for Redis CLI. So it's a list of key names, space separated, then a comma, another space, and all my arguments. So right now, let's say that the key name is foo and I'm going to increment it by 42. Once the command line parameters are in place, I can actually go ahead and run the script. So let's try running it. You can see that clicking the execute or run script uh, yielded an error. And if you try reading uh, the output, which is fairly readable, you can see that in line number seven, let me double click it, and the cursor automatically jumps to the relevant line. So we try doing an arithmetic on a local on local v, which is a Boolean value. And that doesn't really make sense because I just read v and it should have something in it. Let's debug or step through this program and see what's happening. So I clicked the green error, not the double error, just a clear green error or F5 to start debugging. This caused the debugger session to start uh, against the Redis server. And the current line that's being executed or just before being executed is line number three. I have this triangle here, the green triangle or arrow that shows me that. So I can hover above my uh, variables and various things to see the values and I can verify that the arguments were indeed passed correctly and once I start stepping uh, using F10 here over uh, or into the code I can see here at the right side all the variables uh, as they get assigned I can actually even set up a few watches for example V plus I let's V plus I uh, and step through the script. So right now I'm at line number six. I'll step over it. And you can see that V got a value from that call. And indeed that value is a Boolean false, whereas I is 42. And Booleans and integers don't mix together. So how come V got that value? Well, the answer is pretty simple, I guess. Uh, the database is an empty database, so the only way a get or a Redis call get returns false is when the actual key does not exist. And to check this, I can actually show you this through this uh, this through uh, the remote console. The remote console is a console to the Lua engine inside Redis right now, so I can use it to evaluate any valid Lua statement, like what's 40 plus 2. Or I can even call Redis commands by using their capital form, just capitalizing them like so. So if I type capital get foo, I can see that foo is indeed nil, and therefore I got v set to false when I called it. Uh, I can also call, by the way, Redis commands using uh, prepending them by strudel and then just typing them at any capitalization that I choose. So foo is nil, and therefore v is set to nothing, and therefore line seven. Uh, fails. I'll stop the debugger and what I'll do now is of course fix the bug. So I want to check if not v, if v is false, if not v then let's initialize v to some interesting value like zero. This should take care of everything. So if I'll run this script again using the debugger and right now, let's come here to line 11 and just tell the debugger, run to this line of code, run to this, uh, to where the cursor is. I can verify that V has been indeed initialized to zero and continuing the debug session, I'll get back the expected 42 because zero plus 42 is in fact still 42. If I run the script again or debug the script again, you'll see that the answer that I'm getting is still 42, despite the fact that I set it, set foo to, to the new value. And that's because I'm running an asynchronous debugging session and at the end of which all the changes are discarded. You can run in synchronous mode, that, but that's uh, not really advisable in most situations. If I do run this session, not debug it, execute the, this script using F6, for example, it will get run a valid 
against Redis, so the change will be persisted if I'll eval it again or execute it again, I'll get the next result and so forth and so on and so forth. So that's about it. That's uh, the, the gist of it. You're more than welcome to try it and uh, use, use Zero Brain Studio to debug your Redis scripts. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedbacks and we'll be happy to learn if they helped you in anything. So uh, Happy New Year.